Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting week of North Central Choir Music Theory. I am excited today to talk to you about eighth notes. Hopefully, this is a review for most of us at this point, but it's good for us to review and kind of think about how we count eighth note rhythms. So a reminder that eighth notes move twice as fast as quarter notes, right? All of the notes kind of move twice as fast as the next one, right? A whole note takes up a whole measure, a half note, if usually, depending on the time signature, whole note, usually four, half note, usually two beats, quarter note, usually one beat, and then an eighth note is half of that. So it's half a beat, right? So they're showing you here, eighth notes can look all different kinds of ways. When you're in elementary school, they teach you that an eighth note looks like this with a flag on it, which it can, if you're better at drawing it than me, that's good. I'm not very good at drawing it. It can look like that with a flag on it. Or if you have groups of them, you can beam them together. So you can have a group of two like that, or you can have a group of four like this all together. Sorry, that should just be one beam. Right. So you can have a group of four all together like that. Something that I think sometimes people get confused about is I have people tell me that they think that this is an eighth note, like a TT is an eighth note, but that's two eighth notes. They're just beamed together. Right. So when we count them, no matter whether they have flags or beams of groups of two or beams and groups of four, none of that matters for counting them. They all work the same way and they take up half of a beat. Right. So they're showing us here that we count one and two and three and four and. Now, the thing that can be a little bit confusing is that when we have quarter notes, they take up one full beat. So when we're writing it a lot, what, now that we have eighth notes in play, what they're doing here is they're showing you that you write one and separate. And then when you have a quarter note, you write two and like right next to each other so that it's clear that that's just for that one note and then three and separate, and then four and right on top of each other. It is also acceptable for you to write it this way. You could go one and two, three and four, because then that would tell me that that note takes up that full beat and we're just assuming the and, right? So either of those is acceptable when you're writing it in, but it's best to kind of do the and right on top of itself and just on the same space so that we know that it counts. So we're just gonna practice writing in these counts here. So here we have a group of eighth notes. So I'm gonna write one and two and, and then we have a half note that takes up two beats. So I do three dash four, because if I have more than one beat, I always have to use the dash. Now here we've got one and two, and I'll put the and right on it. And then three and on it, and then four and on two separate lines. See how that worked? So I made the two and and the three and very close. So that it was clear that those are right. It's just one note there. Then I have a dotted half note, which we recall is worth three beats. That's right. And then we're going to go one dash two dash three to take up those full beats, right? And then I've got four and. Now, if you want to be really thorough, you could even write one and two and three and if you want to. But that's, again, not 100% needed. And then we have one and two and, and you could either just write three four or three and four and either way would be correct for that. Okay. Makes sense. Great. So now we're moving on. And the next thing that they're going to have us do is fill in the missing beats with eighth notes. So we're going to figure out how many beats we have, how many we need, and then fill it in with eighth notes. So I'm looking at my time signature first to kind of get my bearings. My time signature is four, four, which tells me the quarter note gets a beat. That's the bottom number. And the top number is that there's four beats per measure. So I'm counting up here. I've got three beats already. So I've got one, two is a quarter rest. And then over here, it looks like I got beat four. And so what I'm missing is beat three. So I need two eighth notes to fill up that beat because they're only worth a half. So I'm gonna write three and right there. Okay. Now here, they've given me a half note and I need to fill up two beats. So it looks like that half note's on the second half. So that's gonna be three dash four. And then I need to write one and two and with eighth notes. And I could do them in groups of two like that, or I could connect them all together. So it's one big group. So that's one and two and three dash four. These spaces here don't make a lot of sense, but that's what it is. Oh, then I have a completely empty measure. So see if you can fill that in with eighth notes. We'll check on it tomorrow. And then the last one, I've got beats two, three, and four taken up with this half note, dotted half note. 
So I just have to fill up beat one with eighth notes. Now four and five is just writing in the counts. So I'm gonna do number four for you as one more practice. And then you do number five on your own so that you can kind of get a review. So here's number four. I've got one and, cause it's quarter note, two and three and if you want. And then one dash two, three and. There's no four because we're in a three, four time signature here, right? So I don't have any beat four. And then one in parentheses, cause it's a rest, two and three one and two and three. So one thing that I think gets a little confusing that I already mentioned is that when we're doing this, I need to think of this measure like this. I've got this measure and it's divided in three, right? If I have a quarter note, so this is beat one, beat two and beat three. And then there are ands in each of these beats, right? So in this one, I'm going to use a different color. I've got this eighth note takes up half that beat. And then the next eighth note takes up the other half of the beat. Then this eighth note takes up half of that beat. And the next eighth note takes the other half of that beat. That's how that works. But then this last one, I've got a quarter note. And it takes up the entire beat. So if I have the entire beat, I don't need to write the and. I can just write the three. And it implies that that takes up all of beat three. I only use the and when I need to show that I'm using half of it, right? So what's important is if I only had an eighth note landing on here and then I had an eighth rest, I would have to write, so if it looked like this, if I had an eighth note and then I had an eighth rest, then I would write three and I would have an and in parentheses because it's only taking up that first half of beat three, which is represented by the number and not the second half of beat three, which is represented by the and, okay? We can talk about that more tomorrow. So number five, you're gonna write in the counts. You can do that, just practice that on your own. And then it gives you an opportunity to write a four measure rhythm using eighth notes, quarter notes, and half notes. This is a good opportunity to practice it. I would recommend giving it a go and just seeing if you can fill up the measure, make sure you note that it's three, four on that example. So you shouldn't have four beats in each measure, just three beats in each measure. Now the next page, is exactly the same thing, just with rests. So just like there are whole rests, half rests, and quarter rests, there are eighth rests. They look like fancy sevens with a little dot. That's the eighth rest. I just draw it like this. I do a dot and then a seven like that. That's it, okay? So then they're having you write in the counts and it's just like this, one and two and three and four and, because those are all eighths and then you just have to put all the ands in parentheses, right? And then they do the opposite, the next measure, but it's all the same. All of these are gonna be one and two and three and four and it's just a question of what's in parentheses because it's a rest, right? So then they're saying, write one rest per measure to complete this rhythm for 3A. So one rest per measure to complete this rhythm. I'm gonna skip 3A and I'm gonna do 3B because that's the one that involves the eighth rests. So on this one, I've got how many beats? I've got this is beat one, this is beat two, this is beat three, and then I'm clearly missing half a beat right here. So I'm gonna put an eighth rest right there to make that work. Then here I've got three beats in this measure. I'm missing a quarter rest right there. Here I'm missing an eighth rest at the end because I've got one, two, three, and then four would be there. And then here I'm missing a half rest. So I'll put my little box right there and I'm good because I've got one, two, and then I'm missing three, four. So that's where I put the half rest. So you do that same thing for 3A, fill in the measure with the missing rest. And then on 4A and B, you just need to write in the counts using your ands and parentheses when it's a rest. And then don't worry about this rhythmic dictation at the bottom. We will ignore that until we're in class. All right, so that's what we've got there for you guys. And that's really it. So just a reminder that an eighth note or an eighth rest takes up either the number or the and, but not both. A quarter note would take up both. So if we have one, two, three, one and, two and, three and, that's how that one works. All right, so have fun with that. We will go over it in class tomorrow. I hope you have a great evening and we will see you soon. Thanks a lot, bye.